Hello, my name's Fiona and I'm a travel vlogger and I run about with my camera looking for cool things to do. And today I am standing in the middle of a graveyard, but I'm not here to see the gravestones, funnily enough. I'm here to see this cool church. Now this is Tarbot Discovery Centre. It's in a little village called Port Mahomic, right up in the highlands of Scotland and it's just on the Tarbot Peninsula. Now this would have been a working church back when it was a monastery and there was monks. It kind of fell into disarray during the Second World War when other churches were built in the village. However now it's a very cool museum inside and the reason it became a museum is because archaeologists started to dig in these fields opposite and in the car park just behind me and they started to find cool Pictish stones in villages and little artefacts and now it is a museum that houses all of that stuff. So we're going to head inside, we're going to have a look at some of the cool things that we found in this tiny little village. A lot of the stuff they find here is Pictish and the Pictish only got their name when the Romans came up because they came up, saw people painted like William Wallace and named them Picti which actually means painted person. So Scotland was actually split up into mainly Pictish and then there was a bit of Scots which had come over from Ireland. And Scotland actually got its name when Kenneth MacAlpine took over and named it Scotland. So we could have been Pictland, however Kenneth MacAlpine was a Scot so he renamed it after his heritage. One of the coolest things in the Discovery Centre is actually something that dates back between 2000 and 4000 BC. So it's so old and they're two little balls and they're carved quite cool. And these were found, lots of them were found all over the northeast of Scotland. And nobody actually knows what they're for. There's lots of different theories, but nobody has actually worked out what they're for. So one was found in the crypt when they were digging that out. And another one was found off in a beach near Ballantour. So these would have been used thousands of years even before the Romans came to Britain. So as you walk around the Discovery Centre, you'll see lots of carved stones and that's what the Pictish did to tell stories. They didn't write, they didn't use language. There's not a lot of history known about the Picts, only what we can interpret because we can't understand for sure the writing. However, there is one stone with Latin inscription on it, which is pretty cool. Out in the graveyard, there was four standing stones and they have found three of them. So one is in Edinburgh, two are here. And the last one, frustratingly, the caretaker of the graveyard broke it up because he wanted to make a grave there and just buried all the bones. They know exactly where they're buried because the caretaker told them, but because it's a working graveyard, they can't go and dig them up to find these cool carved stones. So they're just gonna have to wait until it's not a working graveyard before they know exactly what it looks like. So right in the middle of the church, there's some very, very, very old steps. Be careful when you're coming down them because they're a little bit uneven. However, it takes you down into the crypt, and now the crypt would obviously be where they kept bodies and buried people. But this is even more cool because this is actually the original end wall of the original church. And you can see up here, these are windows, and it's just with the sand blowing up from the beach that the level has obviously risen up. The really cool thing about this is it's one of the oldest in Britain, and they actually found about 40 monks buried here. Some of them had battle axes in their head from the Vikings, some of them had healed over so they'd lived and died of different causes, some of them had had burr holes in their head, so you could tell by their injuries and their skulls how they died, how they lived. They're still here today, they're just above my head, stored away in case universities want to come and test them or archaeologists develop different ways that we can see more from them, like what did they eat, what did they drink and their ages and things. So. That's a very cool and creepy thought because currently there's about 40 months of them. In 1997, archaeologists dug up a grave of a man called Chieftain A and he was a six foot tall man and he was head to toe and on top of him was a five foot eleven man and even more weird, in that grave was four extra skulls. So he's named as a six headed chieftain and he had a really bad jaw wound from a sword so his jaw was all cut off and they tried to put it back together and it turned out he had a bit of an underbite but the guy on top of him was full and fine so they've managed to remake what his face would look like with skin and eyes and hair. 
We don't actually know who this guy was, so it was during the clan wars that we don't know why he was buried with these extra skulls, why this guy was buried on top of him, but they're still working on it. But the cool thing is, because he was head to toe, he must have been really important, because back in those days they would kind of lose bones, move stuff out. If your legs were in the way, they'd move them out of the way for someone else who was maybe a wee bit more important or had some money. Um, but to have two different skeletons full head to toe. And something even more weird is there was a little space at the bottom, which would have been right here for a wee baby box. So one of the most important things they discovered here when they were digging it up was vellum making. And vellum is the process of making leather books for the monks. So they would be out where the car park is now and they would be killing calves, using the meat for food, and taking the skin and stretching it out and out and out and keep making it thinner and thinner and thinner until they had pages for books, which the monks could write their holy books on. They would make ink with stuff that you found on the beach, such as seaweed and things, boil up, make really cool inks. Now something really cool is that my nephew, who would be about five at the time, a couple of years ago was walking along the beach and he found this, just on the beach. And it turns out, he gave it to the Discovery Centre to find out and they dated it and they also looked at what it was and it was something to help make vellum. They've dated it back to about 1200 to 1400 years old and they would have attached this to the skin and it would have got tighter and tighter and tighter and stretched it. So my wee nephew found this and he was absolutely chuffed with himself because obviously now it's part of the Discovery Centre. That's just a tiny glimpse of what you can see and learn at the Tarbot Discovery Centre. I can even begin to cover it in my short vlog. So if you want to head to their website, you can find it more and you can even come up and have a visit and see for yourself the really cool things that this amazing place has just in their back garden.